The immigration system in the United States is very complex. So I, while my parents were here legally, I was here um, undocumented. And while my parents also became U.S. citizens, we still didn't have access to legal resources to understand that I, too, could have um, become legal or automatic a citizen um, because I was under the age of 18. So it's very complex. Um, and I didn't know until maybe a year ago <laughs> that I could have been um, automatically as a U.S. citizen when my parents became a, uh, U.S. citizens themselves. Um, it's that complex. After you graduated, um, you were one of the few Latina women to work for YouTube and Twitter. Did you feel lonely as a minority, or was it more diverse then? No, it was not diverse. Um, and it's two different experiences. Um, I joined YouTube right after Google had acquired it. And Google had established a, uh, a system of hiring that now they go back and refute. So the system of hiring was based on GPA, on schools, on referrals, so it was very homogeneous. Now you talk to Google, and I think they're doing a lot of their work to try to not erase, but rectify their hiring practices for so long. I remember just speaking Spanish to only the cleaning staff or the cooking staff. At Twitter, I did feel that there was inclusion. There was not a lot of diversity, but there was an inclusive environment. By the time that Twitter hired their, another Latino besides me, the company was already four years old. So I think that those experiences have shaped a lot of uh, who, where I'm at. What is the situation right now with the representation of especially um, Hispanics and Hispanic women in Silicon Valley in tech companies? I gave a talk this morning to a lot of wealthy individuals or fund managers and uh, venture capitalists. And I said I couldn't show them a slide with data on female Latina founders because there is not enough data. So I showed them female founders. Second is that I gave a talk last week in DC um, around the future of work and uh, the summit of like the future of wealth as well. Whereas the work and wealth lie in tech. A lot of the billionaires in this world are billionaires because of technology. Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Larry, and Sergey from Google. Um, Mark Benioff, so you see a lot of wealth being created in this industry. And so when this wealth doesn't, is not created within certain populations, it is very, very um, noticeable. To take notice, you have started your own startup, which is exactly addressing the issue you're talking about. I'm very excited. Um, I think it's this concept of the future of work. Globally, we have to know that um, technology automation is going to replace certain um, jobs. I think also we need to know what the work, modern workforce will look like. And when I say modern, will it look like it look um, in five years, in 10 years, in 20 years? And are we prepared for that? And so I think a typical at the core of it is saying diversity is not just race and gender, but is experience, is age, is skill, um, different skill sets. And a typical is really solving the problem by analyzing uh, large amounts of data from companies on how they hire. We look at people who have applied. We use a model to predict um, their gender and or race. And then we say, hey, given all things being equal, this type of group is actually not doing really well in this process of the interview. And so all of it is done by just analyzing the resume. We give this talent intelligence back to employers and they look into it and they look about what processes are not allowing them to be inclusive in their interview. It's helping their hiring process. Yes. It's not necessarily um, the person applying for a job directly is not no. going to be helped no, in the long run, possibly. Yes. yes, definitely. We believe that I want to build a product for the person that wants to apply. But um, we won't know unless we have enough data from the companies of how they're hiring, correct? Tell me finally about uh, Project Include. What, what is the goal? Project Include is a nonprofit that helps startups. We have 85 steps for all tech companies to take in order to be more diverse and more inclusive. I'm not going to have you name all 85 points, but <laughs> what are one or two most important points? CEO buy-in. Um, the CEO needs to be committed. You can't just hire someone that runs diversity and inclusion and not give them the power or the support. So CEOs need to be committed. We have a section of it called Startup Include, 
and each cohort, the CEOs need to be committed. They need to be at the meeting at the beginning and the kickoff meeting at the end. So CEO buy-in is the most important. And second for projects include is not wait too long. Like don't think that you have to wait until you're 100 employees to hire someone to define your culture. You need to define an inclusive culture early on.